Have you grinded for two weeks to get the perfect plane? And you were ready to kick ass, but you don't. Somebody will lose every fight with other planes. And every player laughs as the wings fall off the second you get off the ground. Maybe you might say, This plane sucks, and you need to prop it up. Or something along those lines. Do you think you'll never win with that plane? Well, maybe you're just using it wrong. Follow this boy here. And welcome to my generic plane review. Why go through almost every plane I can put my dirty, sweaty, and fat hands on? The plane we're looking at today is the first bomber from the British tree, the Swordfish. Well, let's get the show on the road, shall we? In 93, Ferry, having established a proven track record in design and construction of naval aircraft, commenced the development of a entirely new three seater aircraft intended for a twin role of an aerial reconnaissance and torpedo bomber. A designation of TSRI, standing for Torpedo Spotter Reconnaissance, which was designed with the Air Ministry specifications S.9-30. Many of the designs were contributed by the Greek Naval Air Service, who wanted a replacement for the Ferry 3F Mark 3B, and from the specifications M.1-30 and S.9-30. In 1934, the Air Ministry issued the more advanced specifications S-15-33, which formally added the torpedo bomber role. In 1933, March 21st, it made its first prototype flight, and the second prototype flight made on the 17th of April in 1934. There's a few more tests, including an aircraft carrier one, which had passed, and in 1935, following the successful completion of testing in Marstham, an initial pre-production order of three aircraft was placed by the Air Ministry. In early 1936, an initial production contract for 68 Swordfish aircraft was received, designated as the Swordfish Mark I. Manufactured at Ferries Factory in Haynes, West London, the first production aircraft was completed in early 1936, and the type entered service with the fleet air arms in July 1936. Though obsolete by the time World War II had broke out, it still served in the front lines, allowing many of its replacements until 1935, well beyond its shelf life. This may have been due to how pilots were fond of the plane, and even named it String Bag. It went to multiple fronts, including the Norwegian campaign where on the 13th of April 1940, the launched from HMS Warspite during the Second Battle of Norfolk saw a fleet of German ships. A total of nine German destroyers were sunk or scuttled, one which had been bombed by the Surfish that had also been launched by the Warspite. There's a few others, mostly just sorties and reconnaissance. This was also when the first U-62 was spotted and sunk. At the home front, the aircraft was routinely sortied to deploy naval mines, such as near harbors, a task most challenging due to the limitations of the aircraft. In February 1942, the shortcomings of the swordfish were starkly demonstrated in the German naval fleet movement and known as the Challenge Dash, with planes being ambushed by BF 109s left and right, and the battle was very one sided, with quickly resulting in, in loss of all swordfish. However, despite that, they still had some wins, including when nine swordfish from HMS Victorious sunk the German battleship the Bismarck. After 942, the plane was made into a submarine hunter, after being replaced by planes such as the Ferry Alp Corps and the Ferry Barracuda, and made critical contributions to the Battle of Atlantic, detecting and attacking German U boat packs. There's a few other fronts, such as the Mediterranean and Dutch fronts in 1940 and 1945 respectively. They were used in Canada, Australia, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, and the UK. 13 currently survive today. Now that's out of the way, let's move on to some real life stats. The crew was three, including a pilot, observer, and rear gunner, which also backed up as a radio operator. Its length is 10.87 meters, with a wingspan of 13.87 meters, and a height of 3.76 meters. The wing area 56.4 meters. Its power plant is a times one Bristol Pegasus 3.M3, producing over 510 kilowatts. For guns and armament, it has a times one fixed four firing 7.7 Vickers machine gun and a 7.7 Lewis or Vicker K machine gun in the rear cockpit. You can load up to up to eight 60-pound rockets. Or times one 
760 kilogram torpedoes, or kilogram mine on the fuselage, or a 1,500 pound total of bombs. It's time to get into some in-game stats. At stock, its max speed is 209 kilometers per hour, at a height of 1,400 meters. Its max altitude is 3,300 meters. At its turn time is 5.1.3 seconds. Its rate of climb is 7.7 .7 meters per second. Its take off run is 297 meters. However, upgraded, its max speed is 226 meters, the same height, same altitude. Its turn time is 50.2 seconds, while its rate of climb is 9.2 meters per second. So after all those stats, we should now go into some pros and cons. Remember, this doesn't affect how I think of the plane and its overall quality to fly it. Pros, quite maneuverable, good bomb mode for its rank, useful for downing vehicles in tank battles, easy to aim bombs thanks to low speed, machine guns can take out soft slash light targets, and one rear facing machine gun that's itself useful. Cons, very slow airspeed, poor rate of climb, thermal tank energies and even cannons, aim precision armament to efficiently fend off planes, very poor cockpit visibility. It's about time to get into some tactics. Remember, this is my way of doing things, so you can do whatever it floats your boat, since I don't always have the best strats, and they may not always work for you. Tactic 1. Bomb or torpedo targets and get out. Don't stick around too much to trying to kill things with your machine guns, otherwise you might have a high chance of getting shot down. Also, don't try to turn fight fighters. You'll probably lose if you aren't experienced enough. Tactic 2, go for bases and either turn back to base to do more damage, or try to help clear ground targets. Only clear ground targets if you have friends, or if you're being escorted. Try using the back gunner as much as possible if you're doing this strategy as well, and call for help if possible. It's about time we go into my unscripted final verdict of this plane. This is very unscripted, so I j just a warning, I'm just testing this out. When I first got this plane, when I was lower rank, I actually really disliked this plane mainly because it's slow and I, I really disliked it um, mainly because I was using for arcade but now that I've reused it I actually kind of like it a bit more and I feel like it, it's going to be really useful especially for well more useful than it is um, it's a lot more fun when you're torpedoing because you only have two bombs like four bombs which can two go off um, per drop so you, you can't really do much um, I just you go with friends because, like I said before, it, it's no fun. Like I said, I feel like this will be good for the ships now, but I don't know because I don't have the British pack, so that I'll be ashamed. So, yeah, that's my believe my verdict for this. We really don't have much else to say. It's fairly maneuverable. It certainly isn't the worst plane. It certainly isn't the best. I think I've said that before. Um, but it's extremely fun. I give you that. If you really like low tier stuff and just want to break from high tier, I just suggest just going on Swordfish. Because it's so fun. Um, I think that's a wrap. Hopefully, you learned something today. And I hope you have a great day both, both online and offline. Um, I will post more videos. Because some video got corrupt decides to make do with I, what I had, so that's why there's so much uh, footage from me crashing because it's just raw, basically. Mostly unedited. Um, I will post more. I, I'm probably my dear ship or something. Um, since that's new and it's popular. Um, un well, until that, until next time.